All right, sad one. This is how it ended up. Emmett Idaho, we're going to be going over this NTSB final report September 22nd, 2020 at 1830 local. It was this air tractor AT802A. One on board. Here it is here. November 836. Mike Mike was the tail number. So the analysis was there was three aircraft. They're conducting firefighting operations. And after establishing contact with the air tactical group supervisor, so this is like incident commands um, kind of stuff. So the group supervisor is in charge of everybody in the air during this wildfires. The pilots were briefed on the target descriptions and identified the steepness of the drop and the rising terrain on the exit. So they went over this and the first aircraft did okay. And then the group supervisor requested that the accident airplane adjust its flight path to the left to reinforce that line closer to the burn visitation. The accident pilot confirmed his gate was armed with that agent on the correct line as was sub subsequently cleared to proceed and drop fire retardant. Witnesses reported that the airplane crossed over the intended target ridge, descended into the valley as we saw in the video, and passed the proposed drop area without releasing any retardant. No mechanical failures or malfunctions were revealed with the fire gate system when they went over it after the crash. And it was undetermined why the accident pilot did not accomplish the retardant release and the airplane initiated a climb. However, it impacted terrain about 40 feet below the ridge. So this is a video provided by a witness showed the airplane descending into the valley as we can see without releasing any retardant. The airplane did not begin its climb out of the valley until three seconds before impact. NTSB performance study determined that there was an insufficient amount of time and distance for this aircraft to gain altitude and clear the rising terrain. And that is why it hit this mountainside. And here it is up close. This is all the retardant. That's all what that red is. You can see the fuselage damage here. The pilot had orbited the area at least three times from about 2,000 feet above the ground before initiating the drop run. This would have provided an opportunity to assess the ground, including terrain. Um, however, environmental conditions in the area at the time may have made the terrain features more difficult to discern from the lower altitude of the drop run because of the uniformity of the vegetation. So easy to look at it from 2,000 feet and think that you got it figured out. But until you actually get in there, you can see how different it really is. Looking at this still image at the terrain and the uniformity, it's like camouflage. This ridge line like totally disappears as you can see here. Uh, please subscribe to this channel if you like these final reports. This is the cockpit. Again, no kind of uh, mechanical uh, problems that they found when they went through this. Here's the propeller. And then here's the uh, aircraft from the left side. So probable cause for this one, the pilot's descent below surrounding terrain and his delayed decision to initiate a climb which resulted in impact with terrain. Contributing to the accident was the terrain and lighting conditions. It was 1830 at the time that affected the pilot's ability to accurately assess the terrain clearance. Personnel issues, so decision making from the pilot, part of it. Part of it was the altitude not attained or maintained. The climb rate, not good enough. Environmental issues, the hilly terrain. And um, that's pretty much what they came up with. If you want to help the channel and support, you can go ahead and join the Patreon. And if not, thanks for watching. I'll keep these final reports coming. See you guys next time.